two-thirds of them sailors. The heavy guns of the fleet backed them up from its moorings. Tallinn held out for another six days. On the 7th, orders came from Moscow to evacuate the fleet to Leningrad. The leading German infantry units were already in the streets. Soviets began to burn supplies, installations, surplus ammunition. The unknown war will continue in a moment. Film of the Tallinn operation is rare. Nearly all the Soviet cameramen with the fleet were killed. There were 200 vessels in four convoys, 70 of them transports, with almost no air cover. Almost at once the Nazi bombers found them, steaming north and east. They were 220 miles from home, 150 of them through a gauntlet of German shore batteries, and 75 miles of them sewn with thousands of mines. To clear the minefields ahead would have needed a hundred minesweepers. The Italian fleet had ten. Aboard the ships were 23,000 people, 17,000 of whom were thrown into the sea when their transports were sunk. 12,000 of them were rescued under fire. Soviet ships went down. The destroyer, Sorovi. The destroyer, Gordi. The transport, Veronia. The transport, Kazakhstan. And the destroyer, Yakov Sverdlov. The Sverdlov became a legend by deliberately taking a torpedo meant for the flagship, the cruiser Kirov. Svedlov lost all but three of her complement, including her captain, Alexander Spiridonov. The Baltic fleet lost 16 warships and 33 transports, but 151 vessels, large and small, got through. Leningrad, coming into the great base of Kronstadt, they were welcomed by Admiral Kuznetsov and Andrei Shdanov, leader of the Leningrad Communists. Reunited, the ships of the Baltic fleet now lay at Kronstadt, in Leningrad harbor and in the Neva River. A force of two battleships, two cruisers, 13 destroyers, and over 400 smaller craft lay at Kronstadt. A total, counting shore batteries, of 400 heavy guns for the defense of Leningrad.
Before the year was over, the fleet released nearly 84,000 sailors for shore duty. The ships afloat had only a third of their complements left. Shore parties did not have far to march. The front line began in the suburbs of the city. The cruiser Aurora gave up her battery, the guns that had signaled the October Revolution. A generation later, they were still serviceable. The most powerful naval force lay in the Kronstadt roads. The battleships October Revolution and Marat and the cruiser Kirov, supplementing the guns ashore. On September 4th, the Circle of Steel closed around Leningrad. The Gulf of Finland and the sea approaches to Leningrad were denied to the German Navy. Partly by the presence of the Soviet capital ships, partly by shore batteries, and partly by the Baltic Fleet's 69 submarines. But there was no denying the German Air Force. sailors were not to be shifted. They even managed a little skylarking. The Unknown War will be back after this. The Battle of the Seas. In the late fall, the Baltic turned savage. It was a foretaste. The winter when it came was the worst in living memory. the Baltic fleet shared the rigors of Leningrad's terrible siege. In the spring of 1942, Hitler invited the commanders of the German Navy to his villa in Bavaria. Grand Admiral Erich Rader and Grand Admiral Karl Donitz, architects of the U-boat war. <laughs> 